right? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. The regular school board meeting of the County Consolidated School District for April 8th, 2024 will come to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Perry, would you please call and roll? I think now is a good time. Mr. Bowden. Here. Mrs. Creo. Here. Mr. Kramer. I am now here. <laughs> Mr. Finnegan. Present. Dr. Garrett. Here. Mrs. Golden Yorkie. Here. Mr. Cronenberg. Here. Dr. McVeigh. Here. Ms. Myers. Present. All present and accounted for. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. First on the agenda is the approval of the several meeting minutes. For the first agenda item, uh, the recommended actions of the board accept and approve the minutes of the regular meeting held March 11th, 2024. May I have that motion? Second. Thank you, Dr. Garrett. A second? Second. I missed who that was. Ms. Myers. Myers, thank you very much. I would note for the record that the minutes are, the minutes reflect uh, an incorrect ordering of our motions to accept. Uh, they were amended so that uh, we should have had a motion, an amendment, a vote on the amendment, and a vote on the amended motion. And I will uh, work um, on that as far as my administration of the minutes. but. Aside from that, um, may I, does anybody have any other discussion on the regular meeting minutes? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion is approved, thank you. Next is the curriculum committee meeting minutes of March 25th, 2024. May I have the motion? Thank you, Dr. Garrett, a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Carrillo. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, aye. Thank you, Ms. Myers. The policy committee meeting of April 1st. The recommended action is the board accept and approve the minutes of the policy committee meeting of April 1st, 2024. May I have the motion? So moved, Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. A second? Second, Myers. Thank you, Ms. Myers. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Last minutes are the Finance Committee meeting minutes of April 1st, 2024. The recommended motion is that the board accept and approve the minutes of the Finance Committee meeting of April 1st, 2024. May I have the motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Finnegan. A second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Garrett. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Mr. Tracy, Ms. Brady, I note that the minutes are in the executive content section of my agenda, and I believe these are public minutes. So I would ask that they be transferred into the public section of the agenda. That is correct. We typically post them as draft under executive content until such time as the board approves yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. You're way ahead of me. Thank you very much. Or is it I'm too far ahead of you? But that's my mistake. I appreciate it. <laughs> I believe there is no public comment to address an item on the agenda, Mr. Tracy. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. Thank you very much. Next up on the agenda is board updates. Uh, I wish to make a few announcements regarding some different subjects uh, from the board. First of all, I would recommend everybody put on your calendars today that on May 24th at 10 a.m. we're going to have a groundbreaking ceremony for the new New Garden Elementary School. I see Dr. Weaver in the background very excited about that as are many of us so uh, we look forward to that groundbreaking ceremony. 
Some search updates for you. Applications for applicants for the superintendent position close this Friday, April 12th. As of today, we have 34 applicants for the position from 12 states. I'm excited that this seems to mean that Kennett is a, an attractive destination for potential superintendents and an attractive position and an attractive place to be. So I, I'm very pleased by that. In addition, we have over 250 survey responses to our survey asking for community input. We have over 85 people registered for our different focus groups. In addition to Kennett being an attractive destination, Kennett is engaged. I thank you for your engagement. We want to hear more. We're willing to take more surveys. We're willing to take more people into focus groups. You know, we, we appreciate having that, but clearly people are engaged. I would also hazard a guess that with so many applicants and with our meetings being streamed, there may be applicants watching our meeting tonight. So if that's the case, uh, if they are either present or watching the stream, I want to say hi. Thank you for your application. We look forward to meeting you. We're glad that you applied. Thank you very much. Finally, I would present that the board has held some executive sessions that I'm going to announce. On March 25th, we met from 6 to 7. On March 28th, we met from 6 to 8.30. Those were for the purposes of a personnel matter. And tonight, we met from 6.30 to 6.55 to address confidential student and personnel matters. Thank you very much. Any comments from the team on, on any of that? Awesome. All right, let's move into our other reports and updates. First up is the KHS Student Council, Ms. Lawler. Good evening, school board. My name is Elizabeth Harvey. I am the Student Council President, and I am here speaking in place of Natalie Lawler. KHS had an amazing third quarter. The girls' basketball team made it to states with a record of 16-6. and six. The boys' hockey team won states with a record of 20-0. and 0. The Humanitarian Club's Mittithon raised $19,000 for four diamonds, and about 300 students participated. The spring musical production of Mamma Mia was a huge success. The student leadership team unveiled an updated mascot. The naming validating ended Friday, so I can update you on the outcome next month. Students who participated in the school spring break trips to Spain and the World War II to several countries in Europe loved the experience. Student Council will host an activities fair next fall to introduce all KHS students to extracurricular opportunities available at KHS. The junior prom is April 26th at the DuPont Country Club in order to better serve their cons to their constituents, they are offering online ticket sales like the sporting events if desired. Last weekend, the robotics team made it to the first Mid-Atlantic Championship. Have a great evening. Don't go away just yet. Don't go away just yet. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was a lot to take in. I appreciate it. Any questions or comments from the board? I just want to say I thank you for presenting all off of your phone. So I always present from my phone and I've been called on it in meetings that I'm not paying attention. So I love that you presented off your phone because it, well, we're going to normalize that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Harvey. We appreciate your report. Thank you. Next up, we have an update from Morgan's message, Ms. Herring. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm about. Okay, so um, our first meeting from Morgan's message took place March 1st in 2023. Since then, we've had 12 meetings and we hold them bi weekly. We have gained over 57 members um, and given out over five, or 50 hours of community service, and this includes dedication games, and then we have events where we make t shirts for the teams. So as of spring of 2023, we raised um, over $436 
and $375 went directly to the national organization. And then during the following winter, we raised $371. We, are, we have begun selling t-shirts to teams and the spectators to wear at games, and we have also hosted nine dedication games. And for this upcoming spring season, we have girls and boys lacrosse, softball, and baseball. In the future, we look forward to hosting a volleyball tournament to raise money and also opening snack shacks to raise money. And then topics we've gone over are eating disorders, mental illnesses, um, injuries, pressure, and coaches too. Thank you for coming back and giving an update. For those of us who weren't here uh, for the first time around, can you remind us what Morgan's message, mission, and vision is? Yes, yeah, so Morgan's message was created in honor of Morgan Rogers, who was a Duke University student athlete who committed suicide in 2019 after tearing her ACL and being out. Um, their goal is to and the stigma that surrounds mental health, especially in athletes, by normalizing conversations and ensuring mental health is treated equally to physical health for everyone. Um, the organization is focused in athletes, but we have opened it up our club to anyone who wants to be involved. So, Thank you. And, and I really want to thank you for coming back and giving us a report. We always ask the various groups and clubs that we authorize to come back and tell us how's it going in about a year. And you're, I don't know if you're the only, but you're certainly one of the few to have actually come back and tell us what's going on. And we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I echo that. Um, and I would ask, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to ask before you go. <laughs> I'll trip you up. Um, have you noticed um, any um, pushback to the conversation? Have you noticed um, any changes in the way people talk about mental health? What have you noticed about, uh, I think all those activities are fantastic and every time a lot of people are affected. Have you noticed any, any ways in which your message is getting out there and changing the conversation among student athletes and others? Yes, we've definitely seen a change at the beginning. There was a little like hesitant because it's not really normalized to talk about mental health when it comes to sports, but I'm going to, like, incoming freshmen that we have in our club, they have talked to us about being scared with sports, especially being a freshman in high school. And with them opening up, it's led to multiple other people opening up. And we have kids that aren't even in clubs. I have had people text me asking if I could, like, help them through something. I know they have, too. So it's definitely opened up to more than just the club members. Yeah, we have... Um... At the beginning of the year, we set up small groups. So our clubs kind of run, we have a topic that we discuss for about five to 10 minutes, and then we break into our small groups with each one of us leading it. And we keep the same people in our small groups. And we have definitely seen like over this year, people opening up more and more each time, just because they're used to the people they're with now. So. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is the superintendent's update, Dr. Blakey. Uh, good evening, everyone. I will say to our students, if you choose to leave, that's going to be up to you. I know you guys have a lot of things going on in your lives, and your time is important, so I will give it back to you. You're welcome. Thank you for a great presentation and all you're doing. So I'm going to try to read off my phone, too. So we'll see how this plays out. This is my like second time trying it. I stumbled my way through the first time. So we'll see if I don't get tongue tied. So just want to give an update, a few brief updates of things that are happening around the district. Um, one is the uh, last week we had the PDE team come in to look at our special education audit. I know that uh, uh, Ms. Jones will be speaking about that later and some of the facts that are happening there. We suspect there will be findings. And so this will give us a launch point for things that we will need to work on as we move forward in the future. The next uh, thing that I want to highlight is the work that's happening between uh, Dr. Barber and the Kennan High School uh, administrative team related to our balanced scorecard and updates um, of our strategic plan and the recognition of pathways and some of our dual enrollment courses that are going on. Right now, I'd like to highlight uh, Lit 165, which is a Westchester University dual enrollment course that is off the ground for next year, being taught by our own Emily Wasniewski, who will be teaching that course. There are already 22 students enrolled, so it's pretty well full uh, and will be filled by the time we get that started. So kudos to the team there and Ms. Wasniewski for getting 
uh, students ready to go there. And there are other dual enrollment uh, options and opportunities that are in the pipeline as we speak. So I can't really talk about them right now because they're the secret cooking that we're going on right now. Um, today, this morning, Giant offered and came and gave us uh, a check that annually they donate. So when you go to Giant and you round up and those proceeds come back to us, uh, Mr. Tracy, do you remember how much that check was for? I believe it's uh, 6300 and some change. Nice. So we'd like to thank our community for rounding their purchases up to give us that additional uh, set of resources that we can reinvest in our educational programming. Also, I'd like to recognize uh, our continuing effort and focus on instruction and instructional strategies. Last week, our administrative team, along with the Delaware Academy for School Leadership, conducted uh, another round of our collaboration walks, which are designed to calibrate administrative uh, ratings, um, as well as provide opportunities to discuss instruction collaboratively and provide opportunities to learn about giving good feedback for all of us to be able to improve on what not only we're seeing, but what's happening in our classrooms, which then trickles down the student achievement. And so we've continued those, and last week we had another round of those. I think there's one more round scheduled before the end of the school year. And then I'll highlight two other last things. The Downingtown School District came, as we know, earlier this year to look at our iReady math implementation. And we got a visit from State College uh, School District looking at our ELD program. And so, Ms. Austin, I know you're here in the audience somewhere. So uh, thank you for the work that you're doing there and that we are now being recognized by other districts around the state for the work that's happening uh, for in our ELD program. So thank you, Ms. Austin, for leading that. And then last but not least, we are one of several districts around the county that will be celebrating Eid on Wednesday. And so there is no school for students and no school for staff, but 12 month employees will be here. And so that concludes our uh, district uh, and superintendents update for tonight. Thank you, Dr. Blakey. Any questions for Dr. Blakey related to his report? Thank you. Next up is the facilities report, Mr. Price. President Cronenberg, Dr. Blakey, members of the board, community and staff members, good evening. Uh, the facilities report for April the 8th is as follows. Uh, spring is here. The grounds department and building maintenance departments have begun cutting grass and will do so till Thanksgiving. Uh, all athletic fields are lined and ready for spring sports. We had some drywall repairs to the ceiling in the high school auditorium. Uh, they were completed over spring break. Nice. Um, I would like to thank John Clevenstein for staying with this project through, uh, through Saturday, March the 30th. He, uh, he did a good job with that. Um, we installed some wall padding at Kennett Middle School for safety purposes in the auxiliary gym. The padding was around the base of the wall where it meets the floor. Um, we did some flooring repairs were made in the office at Greenwood. Uh, door alarms were added to some remote doors at Kennett High School for security purposes. They're not online yet, but they are installed. Um, LED, LED light conversion is continuing at Kennett High School. And lastly, since the last board meeting, we encountered some torrential downpours, um, which we weathered pretty well, and an earthquake. So um, we had a pretty, pretty uh, busy month there. So that's the facilities report. Mr. Bryce, thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Bryce? Thank you for your report. Mr. Tracy, the financial reports, please. Thank you, Mr. Cronenberg. Uh, we'll start with a brief building update uh, for the elementary schools. Uh, New Garden Elementary School uh, construction fence is now lining the back perimeter of the property. Uh, beginning this morning, uh, the silt sock fence was put in. Uh, this is part of our erosion and sedimentation control requirements that'll go on throughout Wednesday of this week. Uh, the district is securing its financial security bond. Uh, that is in lieu of putting about $4 million in escrow for New Garden Township. Uh, we also are prepared to pay our building permit fee. That's about $330,000 for this project. Um, all the agreements uh, with New Iron Township will be delivered, hopefully by tomorrow. Uh, you should see full-blown construction, uh, trailers delivery, earth moving equipment starting next week. The first actual construction project will be the demolition of the existing four-bay garage. 
Greenwood Elementary School. Um, I know Mr. Finnegan will report, uh, we're at about 30% design. We had a new estimate proposed. Uh, we had a meeting with PICO. Unfortunately, the location for the four modular units that are being placed out front of the building uh, landed right on top of our main gas line. So PICO will be moving that and waiting for an estimate. Uh, we had our third wave of capital financing that was also discussed in detail at our finance committee report for 46.6 million. Uh, we actually had the bonds on the market last week. Uh, they will close on May 8th, but we had very favorable results. Our yield across the 26 year schedule is 3.67%. Uh, our first semi-annual payment is due on February 15th of 2025. And what that means is the um, schedule that the committee looked at last week is about 130,000 less than was proposed on that schedule. Um, the roof projects, we're gonna give you an update on the roof projects. Uh, we have a bid opening for almost the entire high school roof, including uh, the concession stand and the field house, as well as the entire roof of this building. Uh, we're opening bids on April 12th. Uh, I do have to submit a revision to the board. We are looking at doing it through Omni Partners, which is a governmental cooperative purchasing agreement. Uh, it's actually more advantageous for us to go through another one called CoStars. Uh, so I'll be bringing that to the board and reporting at the Finance Committee meeting in May. Uh, moving on to the Treasurer's report. So once again, we split them about a month ago. So we have our income statement and balance sheets in this section, and then we'll have the bills under um, new business. Page one, we have this revenue summary report for the period ending March 31st. Details our revenues, $43,822,029, and Schedule A lists that all of our fixed investments. On page four, we have our expenditure summary report, which details our expenses and our budgetary format. On page nine, we have the food service profit and loss report, a monthly net income of 26,000 plus change and a year date of 372,000. Uh, we did open our bids uh, for food service management company. Every five years, we're required to bid it. Uh, we had three bidders respond. We are in the process of reviewing uh, the proposals in hand. We will have a recommendation for next month, which will actually be a series of one-year renewals. So you'll award it one year at a time, but for five years, this is required through PDE. On page 10, we have the capital projects fund report. This details our current bond proceeds and our expenses associated with the construction of New Garden Greenwood Elementary Schools. On page 12, we have interim real estate report. On page 13, we have an enrollment report. I think we had a fluctuation of one student down for last month. On page 14, we have the internal service fund for healthcare, uh, for our self-insured healthcare products. Uh, which reports indicates an operating income of $1,426,871 at the close of the third quarter. On page 15, we have our trust fund activity from July 1st through March 31st. On page 16, the student activity accounts from July 1st to March 31st. And finally, for this evening, on page 17, budgetary transfers, mostly usual and customary transfers for this time of the year as buildings are allocating resources as they're finalizing their spending for this fiscal year. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. Any questions for Mr. Tracy? I have a question. Where's the giant check for $6,000? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Actually, we're not in receipt of the check yet because they have a survey that requires us to report the actual best use of the funds. Uh, so we've we've acquired this uh, funding stream from Giant. They've been a partner in the community for many years. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, typically, what we do is identify multiple students uh, that have not been quite identified under our free and reduced eligibility guidelines, but needless, are still having some difficulties paying our expenses associated with our lunch program. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Tracy, on the uh, interim real estates, the large negative for independent one, is that a single um, reassessment or what's what's leading to that? It's actually uh, multiple homes um, in Longwood Preserve. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Tracy. We will be back to you. Next up, Dr. Garrett, TCHS and CCIU reports, please. Thank you, Mr. Cronenberg. 
The uh, Chester County Intermediate Unit Board of Directors held its monthly meeting on Wednesday, March 20th, 2024 at the Child and Career Development Center in Coatesville. Mr. Joe Lubitsky, Director of Administrative Services, presented the draft of the 2024-25 Marketplace Budgets to the board members for initial review. The CCIE Board is scheduled to vote on these budgets on April 17th, 2024. Mr. Lubitsky highlighted a coming increase of 4.58% in the cost of marketplace programs available for purchase by school districts, staying below the Act 1 statewide index of 5.3%. School districts will only be billed for the services they utilize. The upcoming school year is projected to offer 110 programs under marketplace budgets. <clears throat> Dr. Ten Tyner, Principal of the Child and Career Development Center, and Mr. Hirschberger, Supervisor of Special Projects, provided <clears throat> update on literacy programming and the emotional learning support programs at CCDC. Dr. Tynum provided an update on the enhancement of the school-wide positive behavior intervention supports and the behavior team procedures. A few board action items. <clears throat> the approval of the 2024-25 core and occupational education budgets in the total amount of $71,892,080. Core budget, which we'll be looking at having you approve, the board approve, and the occupational educational budget. <clears throat> the core budget being $38,662,587, and the occupational education budget, $33,000,000. $229,493. $229,493. Also, there was a ratified uh, a contract with the Chester County Department of Workforce Development <clears throat> for a parent-teachers program to create a future career pathway for paraprofessionals to gain their bachelor's degree and special education certification. Also approved was a land development agreement with East Whitehall, Whiteland Township for the construction of the Child and Career Development Center, which will be at the Great Valley Campus. The next meeting of the CCIU Board of Directors will be held on Wednesday, April 17th at 7.30 p.m. at the Technical College High School, Pennix Bridge. Thank you, Dr. Garrett. Any You're questions welcome. for Dr. Garrett? Dr. Garrett referenced a couple items which we will have later on our agenda tonight. Uh, Dr. Garrett, there's no report tonight for the Chester County School Authority. Thank you. Uh, next up is the Legislative Council, Mr. Kramer. Uh, there was no meeting, so no report. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Dr. Garrett, right back to you for the Curriculum Committee. Grab a drink of water. <laughs> Hear my froggy voice again. Um, the Curriculum Committee of the Kennett Consolidated School District Board of Education, D Board of School Directors, met on Monday, March 25th, here at Mary D. Lang Kindergarten Center. The uh, <clears throat> members of the committee, myself, uh, Lynn Golden Miarchi, and Dr. McVeigh. Also in attendance, Dr. Uh, Dr. I think I, um, there you go. Uh, Did I'll you just it. get it? I'll, I'll <laughs> <take> it. <laughs> it was uh, Mr. Cronenberg, Ms. Carrillo, Mr. Finnegan. Dr. Collins and Dr. Miller. Dr. Collins introduced a concept of literacy framework, which she defined as a fluid roadmap to guide the creation of policies and procedures relating to literacy and decisions about literacy curriculum, instruction, and assessment. The framework grounds teachers, administrators, and support personnel in a shared vision of literacy and scientifically based approaches to literacy instruction. She then identified the members of the Literacy Leaders Committee, the dates that they met, the process they went through in conjunction with step-by-step -step to determine our literacy strengths and needs. <clears throat> Dr. Collins shared the foundational and comprehension skills data, <clears throat> which was analyzed, as well as our current literacy resources and the literacy guiding principles the group created. Kindergarten and first grade saw an increase in phonological awareness and phonetics. Phonics. There has been an intense professional development for kindergarten teachers focusing on fundament, <clears throat> found in foundational skills. Ms. Carrillo requested that the MAP data be shown along with the national data. Dr. Collins shared <clears throat> that she would provide that report. Over the next three years, the goal is to roll this framework out to the entire staff and in incremental changes. 
stages. I'm doing well, aren't I? With <laughs> between not reading my own report and my voice, sorry. <clears throat> she shared a draft of the district's literacy framework document, including plans for professional development for our educators in the science of reading. We also had an opportunity to um, have a conversation, brief conversation, about the review of an Algebra One textbook. The uh, one that is being recommended is revealed by McGraw Hill, and it's a textbook that will be is available at the district office for review, and we will be voting on that particular textbook at our May board meeting. <clears throat> Dr. Collins will share the rubric and summary statements from the textbook committee with the board. And Dr. McVeigh requested that this information be included in the curriculum committee minutes with this textbook adoption and those moving forward, such as textbook forms. Future topics, uh, April 29th, the curriculum committee is going to hear from our committee that's been working on artificial intelligence and what impact that's going to have on our district, our students, our staff. And we also are gonna hear from students who are currently in the Pathways Internship um, Program. In May 20th, uh, we're gonna <clears throat> talk about the social studies framework. And the one uh, meeting that we are trying to gauge when we can hold uh, is one to review the longitudinal student data uh, that we have for our PSSA and, it, and other tests that we've been doing with our students. So Dr. Collins and I will be discussing when we can do this along with Mr. Cronenberg and Dr. Blakey. <clears throat> the meeting was uh, adjourned uh, at 7.57 p.m. Any questions? Dr. Garrett, I think since you typed up that report, we have changed the date of the curriculum committee Sorry. meeting for April. Yes, I April should know 22nd. that since I've been telling people uh, it's April 22nd for the uh, meeting for the AI and for the hearing from our students who are interning. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Garrett. Any other questions for Dr. Garrett? All right, thank you. Moving on to the finance committee, Mr. Finnegan. Thank you, Mr. Cronenberg. I will not be handing out any advanced degrees tonight, so I will just call you Mr. Cronenberg. The uh, Finance Committee met publicly on Monday, April the 1st, not April Fool's Day. Um, there are only two agenda items. First was a 30% construction design estimate presented for Greenwood Elementary from Dewey Engineering. I would mention Henry by name, but I always butcher his last name, so I won't. Um, the committee gets updated estimates at various phases of design that consider inflation and lessons learned from bids awarded on the New Garden Elementary project for similar materials and services. The estimate increased by a little over six million, mostly due to updating hard project construction costs and doubling the cost of demolition based on the New Garden bids. Reviewing the financing strategy, even with the increased estimates, we're still within our planned contingencies and able to stick to our bond issue schedule that will require no increase of debt service or tax increases due to construction for the life of the projects. Some of the increase is offset by favorable interest income on our issued bonds. We expect to generate about $5 million in interest income over the process. Many more details can be found in board docs for the Finance Committee meeting. Then Mr. Tracy reviewed our general operating budget special education allocations and how the actuals and projections have changed in comparison to pre-COVID. The analysis focused on purchase professional services due to a significant increase over the past five years. The cost for contracted professional services rose from $636,921 in 2018-19 to an estimated $2,253,358 in 23-24. To help alleviate the deficit spending, the administration and committee recommends transferring $800,000 from regular education professional services to special education special professional services and making proposed budgetary adjustments as best we can estimate. And again, many more details can be found in board docs for the finance meeting. And our next meeting will be on Monday, May the 6th. Thank you, Mr. Finnegan. Any questions or comments for Mr. Finnegan? We move on. Next is the policy committee, Mr. Kramer. Thank you, President Cronenberg. Uh, the policy committee met for about 45 minutes, beginning just after 6 on April 1st here. With me in the chair and member Latoya Myers present, um, President Cronenberg and Mr. Finnegan were also present. Uh, Christy Marsala, Director of Human Resources and the staffer for the policy committee was there. 
Three policies were presented by staff for discussion. An amended policy 105 on curriculum presented by Dr. Heather Collins, Director of Teaching and Learning, was updated to align language with Pennsylvania code. It also, importantly, sets a five-year review cycle for all curricula and adds language around special education students and English learners to ensure accessibility and inclusion. The update also adds pilot programming at the su superintendent's discretion and makes mention of our counseling plan. Uh, Dr. Collins explained that accessibility for all and collaboration, collaboration between staff members on district practice reflected here. She also highlighted the review cycle initiative, stating that the social studies curriculum has not been reviewed for 20 years. I conveyed uh, that this reflects our improving nuts and bolts education, uh, something that I am proud of. Ms. Myers highlighted the 20 years social studies review problem, saying she was shocked, saying she knows it is not due to a lack of caring and asking what might have led to this. Ms. Collins replied that setting the policy reflects current conversations in the district and set this policy itself when passed, and it is on the agenda for tonight, will move us forward with review and professional development requirements, bringing out that the shift in our district towards providing resources to educators is an ongoing process. Ms. Common, Ms. Myers commented on these changes alignment with our mission, vision, and board statement positively. She also asked for ratios of counselors to students, information uh, Ms. Jones provided. Ms. Jones also spoke to the longer term initiative of allocating resources according to need. She spoke about our guidance plan, which we passed some time ago, but which um, will be addressed through a steering committee and a, a more intensive process uh, to update that policy that we have recently passed, but that is kind of a placeholder. She talked about how a part of this is team approach um, and um, specifically spoke to college readiness as an example of something that cannot sit with guidance but needs to be integrated throughout the curriculum by bringing out this theme of collaboration. Dr. Collins spoke to the English learner to case manager ratio, saying that it in the past was less than 1 to 44, but that it has risen to as high as 1 to 51. And that is a struggle that we need to watch and something we may need to address through staffing. So a very important point. Policy uh, 108 on the adoption of textbooks. Um, was the next question, and that changes language to include digital format texts, requires including professional staff, um, that means teachers on the team that recommends adoption, which does match our current practice, and it also allows for a designee um, to take authority in the process. Um, I pointed out that the school board has, as one of its listed rights and responsibilities, approving textbooks, that's school code. Uh, there was some discussion of novels, with the answer being um, that uh, Dr. Collins differentiated between assigned reading, where every student reads the same book, and leisure reading. Um, and so novels will start to come to us um, in the future um, through this process. Mr. Finnegan suggested those novels that all students read should be reviewed, uh, but those that only some students read probably don't merit that uh, same treatment. Um, Mr. Finnegan also asked about 20-year social studies textbook being reviewed digitally. Uh, which they are being being available digitally, which they are not. Um, then, lastly, and I think um, very interestingly, Ms. Jones spoke to policy 251 on students experiencing educational instability. Ms. Jones presented this as a lengthy rewrite, replacing a policy that dealt really only with students experiencing homelessness. This policy, which again is uh, up for review tonight, also speaks to students in the foster care students system, students who have been adjudicated and others. Uh, the lengthy policy addresses Act 1 of 2022 requirements, um, and that has requirements for identifying uh, students, establishing points of contact, um, work on credit review and recovery of credits, attendance, a, a lot of things. Um, so this is a uh, this new policy is much longer and much broader than the policy it replaces. Uh, Ms. Meyer spoke to this and said it hits home for her as she herself has housed unhoused students. And she said that the changes in this policy reflect their day-to-day -day experience. She said that she provided resource and advocacy for those students and that this policy will extend those benefits to those students who are in similar situations but don't have that kind of advocacy. Ms. Jones um, said that there are hundreds of students in this group, although we are still gathering data as to who, who might be included. 
Um, we do know that we have the second highest homelessness rate in the county. And we know that there are many students in many categories who will get diplomas under this changed policy, but would not have before. Um, President, President uh, uh, Mr. Finnegan, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Um, Cronenberg, thank you, Ms. Jones, for bringing the policy saying reflects what's right for our students and asked about additional resource requests that will come to us to meet the requirements of this policy. Ms. Jones and Dr. Collins spoke about the difficulty of matching the needs with this updated policy, saying there will be a need for flexibility and maneuverability in the district to respond to those needs. Um, Dr. Collins pointed out that at any time, all students could need these supports. Ms. Uh, and Ms. Jones um, spoke movingly about Ms. Maribel Gonzalez, who she said um, uh, is the, was behind this policy change. Ms. Gonzalez is a, a social worker in the district and she is present. Um, Ms. Jones said Ms. Gonzalez was relentless about ensuring that this policy get put before the board. <laughs> and uh, she acknowledged her dedication and work. Um, and I reiterated, they reiterated that support. I also added uh, my view that this caring community that this uh, policy engenders, uh, embraces, and brings benefits to all of our students and our community. Um, Ms. Uh, President Cronenberg um, congratulated um, assistant, oh, I'm sorry, this is out of, slightly out of order. Um, I've got it. Um, so the meeting uh, ended with President Cronenberg congratulating the assistant principals on assistant principals day, which I did not know was a thing and he didn't either, but congratulations to all <laughs> assistant principals. And uh, he mentioned some superintendents things and we uh, adjourn adjourned with at about 45 minutes and thank you. Mr. Kramer, thank you very much. Any comments or questions for Mr. Kramer? I would just like to second, to, uh, since you're here, Ms. Gonzalez, you are a credit to our district and we appreciate what you do for our students. And th that applies to a lot of people, but you're here and you were mentioned. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next up is the communications committee report of which Mr. Bowden, there is none this month. No meeting, no report. <laughs> we're gonna skip that one. Ms. Marsala, the personnel report. Good evening, President Cronenberg, Dr. Blakey, and members of the board. Um, tonight I would like to present to you the personnel report, and I would like to start by congratulating Tracy Hopkins, a second grade teacher at Bancroft, on her retirement at the end of the school year. Tracy has served the district for 30 years, so we would like to thank her for her service to Kennett. Um, you'll also see that we have several um, requests for leave of absences, recommendations for employments, a change of assignment, and several supplementals. The recommended action is that the board approve the following personnel changes as presented. May I have the motion? So moved, Kramer. Mr. Kramer, thank you. A second? Sorry. Mr. Bowden gets credit for this one. Thank you, Mr. Bowden. Any comments or questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Ms. Vitri, congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Marsala. Next up is the bill list, Mr. Tracy. Thank you, Mr. Cronenberg. This evening we have the bill list for a variety of funds. Uh, certainly if any of the board members have any detailed question regarding any of the items on tonight's report or any of our reports, please feel free to reach out to me and we'll provide you with a full backup. Uh, beginning on page two, we have the general operating bill list for the period of March 12th through today in the amount of $3,289,805.28, an additional $1.7 million in payroll disbursements. At the tail end of this section, you can find our PNC procurement card activity on pages 14 and 15. On page 16, we have the athletic fund bill list for the month of March, which represents payments for various officiating for our male and female spring sports. On page 18, we have our internal service fund for our self-insured health care for medical prescription dental. On page 20, we have our capital reserve bill list 
in the amount of $9,563.90. On page 22, the capital projects fund bill list in the amount of $305,081.80, which represents payments associated with our new elementary school building program. And finally, on page 24 for this evening, we have a new report. Uh, since we actually broke it out, we discovered that our food service fund bill list has never been incorporated in the bill list. Uh, so this is an inaugural presentation of our food service bill list in the amount of $194,160.85. And that concludes this evening's report. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. The recommended motion is that the board approve the bill lists. May I have the motion, please? So moved, Finnegan. Mr. Finnegan, thank you. A second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Garrett. Any questions for Mr. Tracy? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. We move into new business. 5.1 is a student trip. The choir, Mr. Batten. As Mr. Batten moves to the microphone, please have the choir of angels singing in your head. <laughs> Good evening. Um, the choir at Kennett High School is doing amazing things. Uh, we've brought in, <clears throat> excuse me, we've brought in thanks to the Kennett Education Foundation, different university professors and cl guest clinicians to work with our choirs. They, students individually consistently make district level, uh, region level, state level, and even national level festivals and competitions. And so, the next step is to send our kids out. And so I'm requesting an overnight trip this coming fall as a choir retreat weekend. Excuse me. Um, in addition to working on like the foundational skills that are done at the beginning of the year with a group of students, we'd be learning the music and, and working on the technique and all this other stuff. But more than anything, it's just helping to build the, the community. And whether it's through the music making or through the hiking or camping or um, or the ropes and archery courses or the boating, there's a lot to do. And, um, and I'm really excited about the opportunity to go and take students for a retreat weekend where we're both building community and making music. Thank you, Mr. Batten. I'll put the motion on the floor and then we'll see if we have any questions for you. The recommended motion is that the Kennett High School Choir student trip be approved in accordance with board policy 121, field trips. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Finnegan. A second? I can second it. Thank you, Dr. Ms. Carrillo. Any discussion or questions? How many um, students are you expecting to attend? I can take up to 40. Okay. Um, the choirs of the high school are just under 100. And for this first trip, I definitely want to take our sort of top level chamber choir of about 25 students. And then after that, open it up to other students. We have an honors course at the high school and I might offer it to those students first, but also give opportunities for everyone um, that's willing to come on a first serve, first come first serve basis. <laughs> I know from over the years of, of chaperoning way too many music adjudication trips for, for the middle school and high school that this is really good. I mean, the students get there and get together and meet meet their peers. And it's um, besides just the aspect, uh, the musical aspect, like you say, there, there's the uh, the friend building, the connections they're, they're making. It, it really is beneficial. So. Thank you, Mr. Batten, and thank you for all you do. Um, the cost here um, was listed as $150 per student plus the cost of buses. Um, this is not an exorbitant cost, but I do want to note that I would not like that to be um, something that precludes participation. So um, as as you'll uh, uh, take that on, take, take on organizing this very worthy trip, I know you'll take that into consideration and ensure that, uh, you know, those resources get met one way or another. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Mr. Batten, as we look forward to October of 24 for this field trip, I wonder if you might enlighten us with anything coming up the rest of this year. Yeah, so our, um, the chamber choir who I'd like to take uh, next, or this coming rather, October, we've had an incredibly busy year, um, not only with bringing in composers from overseas to work with us uh, and Unionville and Pequay Valley and a bunch of other schools, uh, but they performed with the Newark Symphony Orchestra, and this coming weekend, 
we were asked to perform with the Chester County Choral Society. Um, they're doing a large like, sort of masterwork uh, this coming Saturday down in the Paoli area, Malvern. And, and it's a really exciting opportunity, not only for the students to make music with adults and community members, but there's a lot of Kennett graduates that are involved in, in that organization. And it's, it's a great way to show the students that what we do lasts a lifetime and it doesn't necessarily stop after the spring concert ends on May 8th. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Benton. Any other questions? On the motion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Batten. Thank you. Congratulations. Next up is the policies that Mr. Kramer gave us a report on. First up, Ms. Marsala is policy 105 curriculum. Yes, good evening again. Um, for the purposes of this policy, um, the general overviews is a, um, a more in-depth definition of curriculum as well as some additional guidelines for the overall changes that were being made to this policy. It really was looking at a continuum of educational programs and services for all students with disabilities pursuant to law and regulation, and also looking at um, language instruction education program for English learner students pursuant to the law, regulation, and board policy. So those were the changes with this policy. Thank you, Ms. Marcella. The recommended action is that the board approve the above section of board policy and adopt it as policy, rescinding and declaring void all previous policies or portions thereof to the extent that they are inconsistent with the policy. I'll, uh, may I have a motion? So moved to Kramer. Mr. Kramer, thank you. A second? Second, Myers. Thank you, Ms. Myers. Any discussion? So I, I hoped to include the initial uh, deliberation that happened in that meeting in my report. I do think it's important to note um, one of the major issues here is um, setting a five-year review, which I think is an ambitious change and an appropriate change, something that, that I'm proud we are uh, making policy. Um, Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Any other comments or questions? Uh, just a general comment on the policies in general. I, I do appreciate when they're sent to us prior to the uh, policy committee meeting that the changes are, are, are bolded and highlighted so we can go right to, instead of having to compare the old policies to the new policies and strike out documents and all that. And I do realize, I know that the, the one um, policy 251 was a total rewrite, not just a change. So in that case, you had to start from scratch on that one. But I, I do appreciate the, um, the effort that goes into making it easier for us to see what, it, what changes we're approving. Thank you. On the motion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. We move to policy 108, adoption of textbooks, Ms. Marcella. Yes, and the two changes that were um, noted in this policy is that textbooks are now being defined as being in print and in digital format. And the delegation of responsibilities is that the superintendent um, in consultation with administrative and professional staff will be responsible for the selection. So it was adding um, a little bit more breadth to who was looking at the overall recommendations for this. Thank you, Ms. Marcella. The recommended action, I feel like I'm gonna repeat myself here. The recommended action is that the board approve the above section of board policy and adopt it as policy, rescinding and declaring void all previous policies or portions thereof to the extent that they are inconsistent with this policy. May I have the motion? So moved Kramer. Mr. Kramer, thank you. A second? Second, Myers. Ms. Myers, thank you. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Finally, we have policy 251, students experiencing homelessness, foster care, and other educational instability. Ms. Marcel. Yes, thank you. As um, Mr. Finnegan noted earlier, that this was a complete rewrite of this policy, so there's not really changes for me to highlight in it. Um, it is a little bit more lengthy policy, but it was written that way to incorporate um, all students that are experiencing um, educational instability. So I will present this to the board, and if there is any questions or discussion, I may ask my colleague, um, Ms. Jones, to assist me with this. 
Thank you, Ms. Marcel. The recommended action is that the board approve the above section of board policy and adopt it as policy, rescinding and declaring void all previous policies or portions thereof to the extent that they are inconsistent with this policy. May I have the motion? So moved. Ms. Myers, thank you. A second? Second, Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Any discussion? Uh, just a comment. I don't know if it's a confidential number that you can't discuss in public, but I do know that when you mentioned the number of students that are affected um, by these conditions, I was actually very surprised at how high the number was for our district. Mm -hmm. So, Can you talk about the number or not? Like how many students are experiencing homelessness? <clears throat> I think it's good to know because as everybody knows, it's getting very expensive to live in this area. So I think it's, it's good that we have a policy because it, this is only getting worse. Sure, um, I receive monthly reports um, that provide me with the number of students. Um, I do know it's over 250 currently um, that are considered homeless in our district. Um, I can certainly reach out and get you the specific figure. Um, we do receive updates each month and typically that number has been continuously trending up. Um, the policy uh, though is much more broad, so it also addresses um, other um, students as well that maybe are not experiencing homelessness, but are um, experiencing some other form of educational instability. Um, and as I noted at our policy committee meeting, there are hundreds of students that meet that definition in our district. So what we need to do um, is essentially gather that documentation and then continuously update it to ensure that all of the students that meet that criteria are captured. Um, because as you can see within the policy, there are a number of provisions um, that we want to make sure um, are covered in terms of removing barriers to uh, attendance and so forth. Um, including things like uh, waiving fees for credit recovery and so forth. And so we just want to make sure that um, we're doing every, everything that we can to support that group of students. Any other comments? Um, I, I do um, want to make it clear that I think this is a, a policy that does shift us in a, in a positive direction. And I just want to mention, I am aware of an instance several years ago in which um, students who were experiencing disruption, um, the, the request was made to prove that someone within the boundaries of the district was paying their health insurance, which was a very difficult bar to meet. This policy explicitly does make it clear that, um, that the bar is much lower and that's the policy does explicitly say that we are going to um, ensure that we include more students and serve more students with this than not. This to me, um, again, and I do I do make, make note of um, Ms. Gonzalez being here. This is a, a policy that comes from the ground up from those um, folks in our district who are working with um, students who are experiencing this. And I personally am really, really pleased that this represents a change for the better, a change um, for the, the more humane. And um, I'm very pleased that, that we're passing this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. For myself, I also appreciate the work that's been put in by Ms. Gonzalez and Ms. Jones. Uh, this is a huge effort. I invite anybody to dig into this policy. It's not your normal policy. It speaks to who we are as a district, as well as goes into a, a lot of detail about what we aim for and can do for our students as a district. So I appreciate the work that's gone in on this. On the motion, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Ms. Jones, you are still up. We are next to uh, number 5.5, .5, reading aloud. Administration is requesting that the board approve the contract with reading aloud for tutoring services for students. Reading Aloud will provide one-to-one -one structured literacy-based instruction to students in accordance with their IEPs, as well as ongoing progress monitoring to ensure response to intervention. Reading Aloud will only be utilized when the CCIU is unable to provide properly certified staff in the requested format, whether in person or virtual, within a timely manner. Ms. Jones, thank you. The recommended motion is that the board approve the contract with Reading Aloud for tutoring services. May I have the motion? So moved. I'm going to take Mr. Kramer for the motion and Mr. Fitt, Ms. Myers for the motion 
and Mr. Finnegan for the second. Thank you very much. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Ms. Jones, 5.6, the special education plan. Administration is requesting that the board approve the special education plan prior to submission to the Pennsylvania Department of Education for final approval. As you recall, I presented uh, the draft plan to the curriculum committee back in February. The plan was then posted to the district website for community review and feedback. Emails received from parents were overwhelmingly positive. A few minor changes have been made to the plan since the last time the board reviewed it. Under the school district areas of improvement and planning specific to indicator 11, timely initial evaluations, the action items have been revised to include continued partnership with the Chester County Intermediate Unit for evaluation support, as well as temporary clerical assistance when a building does not have a district employed psychologist. Under parent training, training descriptions have been revised to ensure that training objectives are clear and to support the overall organization of the document. Ms. Jones, thank you very much. The recommended motion is that the board approve the special education plan and its submission to the Pennsylvania Department of Education. May I have the motion? So moved. Dr. Garrett, thank you. A second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Bowden. Is there any discussion? As a member of the steering committee, um, this has had some extensive discussion. This is a remarkable push forward in the face of uh, requirements. Um, we have gone from just responding to requirements to moving towards um, some ideals around this topic, and I'm intensely grateful for that. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Any other discussion? Now, other than I, I understand it, it was a um, all hands on deck trying to get this thing done in, in the proper time to get it submitted, so I, I appreciate the work that everyone um, put into this. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor on the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Mrs. Jones, we have settlement agreements. Administration is requesting that the board approve the confidential settlement agreements with the parents of students as listed. Due to the confidential nature of these agreements, I am unable to answer any questions in a public meeting. Thank you, Mr. Jones. The recommended motion is that, is that the board approve the one confidential addendum to a settlement agreement and one settlement agreement with the parents of students. May I have the motion? Dr. McVeigh, on the motion, a second? Second. Dr. Garrett, thank you for the second. We have no discussion on this item. All in favor on the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Next up, we have the 2024-2025 CCIU budget, Dr. Garrett and Mr. Tracy. Great, I'm gonna start and then I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Tracy to kind of go into more detail. Um, through the many months when I've been reporting out on the CCIU, the CCIU is constantly being updated and given presentations on the budget. So on the core service budget, there is uh, no increase at all uh, for district contributions for 2024-25. And I'm gonna ask uh, Mr. Tracy to give any details uh, to the board at this time. Thank you, Dr. Garrett. Um, there was a comprehensive budget document prepared by the Chester County Intermediate Unit. I believe it was presented by Dr. Fiore and Joe Lubitsky. It's 104 pages. Um, in board docs, there is a little link that says, if you would like to see all this document, just press here. Uh, that will produce, I sort of have the Sparks Note version for you. Um, as Dr. Garrett mentioned, uh, you're gonna be approving two of the four budgets this evening. Uh, for the IU, the only two that actually require this board's approval. Uh, there is no increase in the core budget. And let me just talk about the four different budget. Core services are basically their administrative services. Uh, that is the smallest component of their budget. We'll also be asking you for approval of the occupational education budget. And that is all the occupational and vocational programs uh, that our students participate in. The very large component of the IU budget, which does not require this board's approval, is marketplace services. And marketplace services, I think, are best described as pay to play. These are programs that we will have the IU educate students that are better educated there than here. And sometimes they're educated here with IU personnel. Uh, that is the largest by far component of their budget. 
the final piece of the IU's four budgets is called categorical budget. Uh, they are almost predominantly restricted federal, state, local grants. Uh, they do not require this board's approval. Uh, and I'm going to co-mingle the next two items, so 5.8 and 5.9 sort of are intertwined. I'd be happy to entertain questions from either or at either action item. Uh, the core budget stands at a little over 34.7 million. Categorical bud budgets is 26 million. Occupational education is 31.5 million. And marketplace service budgets is 211 million. Uh, they're not only participants from Chester County Schools, but the IU has a higher tuition rate for districts that send outside of Chester County. Um, the occupational education, which is item 5.9, has a 4% tuition increase uh, in their programs. The marketplace programs, uh, there's a variety of, uh, they're limited to less than the 5.3%. And I can speak on behalf of the IU administration uh, they are very cognizant of the restrictions under Act 1 and have done an outstanding job really modifying the costs that are being passed along uh, for the students. The core budget, as I mentioned, is not only the smallest component of the IU budget, but has been relatively steady for years. Our district contribution is $33,068. Uh, that has been consistent for the last two years and less than the prior year. So our contribution is 33.68. Uh, that is a set number. The occupational education, uh, which is item 5.9, is based upon a three-year weighted student enrollment. So we have approximately 87 full-time equivalents. So it's half-day programs that we actually send students in. So we have approximately 170 billable half-day programs. So they look at an average over the last three years. We have 81.667, very detailed uh, number, and that is then times their rate. So that is also fixed numbers for next year's budget. So you're always sort of build a year in arrears based upon this formula. Uh, so that is set. Uh, we have students uh, participating not only at Southern Chester County, Pennox Bridge, uh, we have them at Brandywine, uh, we do not have any at the most northern campus uh, out of the third IU site, but we do have other vocational programs that are not part of the IU. We have a welding program through Octorera and also a homeland security program that is run in Modena, but it is through Octorera. So uh, that really concludes the budget. It is very complex. I think they do an excellent job. There is a tremendous amount of detail in the budget presentation. Uh, Dr. Fiore, Mr. Levitsky have always offered to come and present. Uh, we did waive that this year, but we bring them back about every other year so that the board can ask questions uh, of their programs, of their services, and how they can better serve our district. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tracy, for covering that in detail. Uh, we won't be voting on the marketplace. We're only gonna be voting on the core and the occupational tonight. Thank you, Dr. Garrett. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. The first of the two recommended actions is that the board approve the 2024-2025 Chester County Intermediate Union Core Services Budget in the amount of $38,662,587. May I have the motion? Second. Dr. Garrett, thank you. A second? Second, McVeigh. Thank you, Dr. McVeigh. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. The second motion is that the board approve the 2024 2025 Chester County Intermediate Unit Occupational Education Budget in the amount of $33,229,493. May I have the motion? So moved. Dr. Garrett, on the motion, a second? Second. Mr. Finnegan, thank you. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Last in our new business tonight, the 2024-25 proposed final budget, Mr. Finnegan and Mr. Tracy. Okay, shall I start out with a little introduction here? And then you can do the glance or? You, you, you can start and finish. Oh, all right, I will do that then. <laughs> 
Thank you, Dr. Tracy. So anyway, we have the, um, where we were back in January with our first um, preliminary budget, which we approved back then, the Aquin index was set at 5.3%, um, which is the most that we can raise taxes without going to a public referendum. Uh, it called for a real estate tax increase of 4.86%, which was less than the Act 1, but, but higher than, than I was comfortable with. Um, no referendum exceptions were required. And that meant an average residential property tax increase would have been $278. Uh, we always promised to work on it and bring it down, even though we increased programs. So the proposed final budget modifications increased the basic education subsidy to 50% of the governor's proposed Commonwealth budget because they don't have their budget passed yet, so we guess. So that would be 645,000. A reduction in special education subsidy, which is 113,000, not because we have fewer special education uh, students that we're serving, but our student population in general is decreasing and they base it upon your total student body. So fewer students, less subsidy. An increase of the Ready to Learn grant funding of 500,000 from the state, we think that's pretty solid. A reduction in the Pennsylvania State Employers contribution rate of $252,000. Um, that might be short-sighted because they'll probably raise it up again next year, but we'll, we'll take the savings when we get them. And a reduction of health care premiums of $147 just because of our um, you know, studious work and our, our um, self-insurance plans and everything we've been doing. So that means our proposed final budget is going to be a total of $103,715,402. First time it's been over 100000 since I've been here. So, sorry, 100 million since I've been here. So that would mean a proposed real estate tax increase of 2.82% or the average residential tax increase of $168. So that's down from the 278, the preliminary. And we will need to approve our final budget on June the 10th, whether or not the state approves their budget, uh, which is always a hit and miss. So uh, in, inside of board docs, there is the budget at a glance, which is showing the breakdown of how we get to that, uh, that final amount for the budget of 103 million and where the increases and decreases were from 2324 uh, and you can kind of look in there and if anyone has any questions about um, anything that went, with, went up or down more than you expected that you can certainly ask but I think we covered that all in the finance meeting. Thank you Mr. Finnegan. The recommended motion is that the board approve the release of the proposed final general operating budget in the amount of $103,715,402 for the Kennett Consolidated School District 2024-2025 fiscal year. I have the motion. So moved, McVeigh. Thank you, Dr. McVeigh. Second? Second. Mr. Finnegan, thank you. And as Mr. Finnegan noted, this is our proposed final budget. Uh, the way the budget calendar works, we approve the final budget in June, but we're required by the state to perform this approval uh, at this meeting. So any other conversation or discussion? I just wanted to thank Mr. Tracy for your work on bringing that down. I know that I had a strong reaction to the initial one, with, particularly with the tax increase. I had spoken before that I know more than a handful of families who've lost their houses um, to taxes and school taxes are the highest. And so that is significant, even though it may only be, you know, $168 or we always do that, those rates in that way. So thank you for your work on that. I know that, and Mr. Finney, I know you, you mentioned early on in my tenure on school board that, you know, the process is to bring it down and that's what you always attempt to do. So thank you for your eye towards that and ensuring that was happening in, in finance committee. Um, with this budget, I know it's just, it's just a release, but I do want to make my point that I've been making that our list continues to get longer about the priorities and there's only so much money. And so I just want to ensure that we continue to think about that and how we can add additional resources in those areas that we continue to talk about each and every meeting. Thank you, Ms. Myers. Any other comments? On the motion for the proposed final general operating budget. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Thank you. We move into public comment. 
We have a couple public commenters tonight. Uh, just to review, in accordance with board policy 903, public participation in regular meetings, community members who have requested in writing to address the board are now going to be acknowledged. Participants may speak up to five minutes. No participant may speak more than once on the same topic unless all others who wish to speak on that topic have been heard. And the total public comment session is 30 minutes. First up, Mr. Rick Bochanski of Kennett Square. Well, just want to reiterate uh, my concern that the board is not willing to answer my question about what I quoted last meeting, um, your guidelines. So the fact that I can't get a yes or no answer to your own guidelines is in itself concerning because that's telling me that there is concern. And if this is all about the kids, there should be at least discussion about a concern. So if there isn't a concern, just tell me no. Um, the reasoning you mentioned about not wanting to get into a theo theological discussion. Um, I'd be interested to know what you define theology to be. Um, Cause I, I, I don't follow that reasoning. Um, these are your own guidelines. And again, I would just reiterate what I'm talking about here quoting. There's mention, it says, everyone gets to decide their gender identity for themselves. You may identify as a girl or a boy. If you don't feel like a boy or a girl, you might identify as a gender, gender queer, binary, or just as a person. You may choose not to use a specific term to define your gender identity or you may use a term today that you decide later doesn't fit. Also quoting, the gender binary is oppressive to anyone that does not conform to the dominant societal gender norms. So we're telling our kids that if they don't follow this stuff that they're considered oppressive, that belief. Um, you know, we were talking about homelessness earlier. I mean, if we lose, you know, the family, which this stuff is an attack on our families. I mean, a lot of times the homelessness stems from families falling apart. So, I, you know, I'm just going to continue to request that at least this gets discussed. I understand not everyone might agree with me and that's fine, but I'm just requesting at least the board uh, discuss this. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rochansky. I will state that uh, Mr. Rochansky mentioned, you mentioned that you're quoting our guidelines. Uh, those were PDE guidelines. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Next up, uh, I believe we have Joey Corrado yeah. and not Adrian. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I appreciate the couple minutes here. And just wanted to come in to, my name is Joey Corrado. I'm a fourth generation. When my kids graduate, we kind of, there'll be four generations of Corrados graduating. And I just want to come in here to talk about the superintendent search and kind of how myself and others feel. Um, I was lucky enough to start the pathway programs with Dr. Blakely. And we forged a great relationship. And one of my things with him was my ear to the ground with the community. And as we're trying to build change, COVID, coming back, students, the unknown. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, through that time, 
and everything is, it just reiterated the community, the faculty, the teachers, the administration, and it's Ken. Like it's in our blood. I appreciate hearing there's 12 states and all these applicants, but I don't feel, I don't think the community feels that's what we need for our next superintendent. We need a communicator. We need someone to keep bringing it together. We've done a lot of change, a lot of good, and we need to continue that, not restart it. We've done, we, we've done actually with talk pathways with you. I know that has gone, we've had our good and bad moments with that and it really feels like it's getting its feet moving forward, the internships and everything else with it. So I just don't feel and, and, and the others, parents and everything that we talk that we need to start over. We just want to continue to build on what we have done. It's Kennet, and we live it, we breed it, we love it. And that's, that's, that's what we need for our next superintendent. So just wanted to come here and say it. Um, uh, my sister was going to be here because she cares. She's, I'm a 95 graduate. She's a 91. She's, I was like, eh, how are you with public speaking? Because I might be out of town. And she's like, ah, oh, geez. <laughs> but that's what, how we feel. And I just wanted to come in here because the survey, we have to start somewhere. But the survey just, it's a survey. And, you know, one of the things on the survey was, where do we feel the resume is important? Well, I don't feel the resume is important for this search. I feel what I just talked about is what's important. Everyone can have a resume, but it's understanding can. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. We move to our calendar of events. And as we approach the end of the school year, I would note that the calendar of events that we see here tonight is the board calendar of events more than the school calendar. Events. I invite everybody to go to the district calendar because we have a myriad of cool stuff that goes on for our kids for the end of the year. And that's on the district calendar. The public comment or public content uh, tonight is, is about uh, open dates and about board meetings. I would mention that as far as uh, any board activity, we, the board, will give at least some form of update during that board meeting on the superintendent search. Um, it's our intention to keep the community in, as informed as possible. Any board meeting activity uh, will be an opportunity to, to do that, in addition to uh, emails that may come out from time to time around the search. Wednesday, April 10th, I know my son Derek is very excited, and my daughter Caitlin is very excited that there's no school that day. So nobody should show up, except if you're a 365 day employee. <laughs> Monday, April 22nd, we have a curriculum committee meeting at seven o'clock. We also at six o'clock, we will have a uh, working group. Uh, we haven't finalized the title of that one yet, but it's gonna be something along the lines of a school management study working session that the board is gonna be going over at six o'clock on Monday, April 22nd. That's public, yeah. Uh, Tuesday, April 23rd is primary election day. Please make sure that you have your ballots and you vote, do your civic duty. As, an, as the primary election day, schools will be closed. That's an in-service day. Monday, May 6th, policy committee at six o'clock, finance committee at seven o'clock. And our next regularly scheduled school board meeting is Monday, May 13th at 7 p.m. And just because I told Mr. Tracy I would mention it, Friday, May 24th at 10 a.m. is the New Garden Elementary groundbreaking. Please show up for that one. With that, I appreciate everybody's time tonight. We are adjourned.